Earth. The planet that we inhabit has been around for more than 4.5 billion years. Life has existed for most of that time, and humans represent just a blink, just 2 million years. We know so little about this planet so close to us and how modern Earth's tectonic plates were formed. A new research breakthrough by Penn State geoscientist Jesse Reimink could change that. The theory of the formation of the Earth's tectonic plates and continental crust is one that is hotly debated. Some argue that continents grew rapidly over 4 billion years ago, while others believe that continents only grew more recently. Using an alternative technique involving the rock record with the help of an important dating tool, the mineral zircon, Reimink and his collaborators suggest that continents only began growing between 2.5 and 3 billion years ago, and that crustal growth was far more gradual than originally thought. The main goal of this research project was to really understand how continents grew through time and when continents grew through time. The curve we've calculated suggests that there wasn't a lot of continental crust four billion years ago, but that continents really started to grow substantially around three to 2.5 billion years ago. The rock record researchers used is more sensitive and less prone to time biases versus existing methods that rely only on the mineral record. Reimink said that allows for a more reliable calculation but it still has its challenges. For example, rocks can be reset and reborn in a number of ways. A stream could weather away sediment that's later formed into a new rock, or intense heat could melt rocks into magma and eventually form new rocks when the magma cools. That's where zircon came in. By determining the reworking and reformation of igneous rocks, researchers were able to gain a better understanding of how the continental crust was recycled or destroyed through time. That process relied on lab experiments to help the team better understand the processes they investigated. Meanwhile, Zircon is an excellent recorder of the primary age of rocks before they were overprinted. The team then used this new information to model the volume of the Earth's continental crust over geological time. Previous models had focused just on the Zircon record and Zircon ages and Zircon chemical proxies to create a continental growth model. Because they're one step removed from the rocks, they are imperfect proxies for many of the processes like recycling or reworking that we want to really closely track. What we did, which was unique and different from other approaches, is we, we took the zircon age data because that's a better tracer of continental ages, but we used the reworking metrics from the whole rock record and we integrated those two signals together, which in our opinion gives us a more reliable understanding of, of growth versus recycling back in time in particular. While this isn't the first time scientists have suggested this theory of a more gradual crustal growth, it is the first time that the combination of the rock and mineral record have been used to arrive at this conclusion. This breakthrough can lead geoscientists to focus on the apparent symmetry between the crust and mantle signatures to further our understanding of continental growth. We have to understand when continents formed to understand how continents formed. Continents are just so fundamental. They are really what makes Earth unique compared to other planetary bodies that we should understand their full history. And, and the fact that we don't, I think, is, is one of the outstanding questions in the Earth sciences and has implications for evolution of life and looking at other planets. So we can try and work out a single planetary life cycle and then we can map that onto other planets in our solar system and outside of our solar system. Because when we look at other planetary bodies, we get a snapshot in time and we need to kind of put that into the context of how planets evolve over billions of years.